camera fraction. Awesome. Hi. So we've been talking about exponent rules. We've actually learned a few. Let's just think about what we've learned so far. We've learned that if you have same bases, a to the m times a to the n, it would equal a to the what? M. M. M plus n, right? You're adding the exponents if you multiply bases with exponents. You're going to add the exponents, right? So we also know this one. We know that, um, uh, I forget it now. Ooh, the oh, yeah. A so to the a, a to the m in parentheses to the nth power is equal to a to the what? A m, m times n. M times N, right? Good. All right. Is nth even a word? M? Nth. Nth. Yeah. The nth power. To the nth power. It is, actually. We use it in math all the time. Really? And then there was another one where we learned this too. A, B, A times B to the M, mth power is equal to A to the M, B to the M, right? Example with that was the one that's 4x squared that's squared, right? Suddenly I'm squaring the 4, 4 squared, x squared squared, right? <laughs> Which is 16x to the 4th, right? Hey Gary, if, if nth is the word and mth is the word, then is the t, or is the value of t, t? <laughs> what? <laughs> Six T. <laughs> oh yeah, six T. Yes. Yes, it's a word. <laughs> ask your, call your dentist, ask them that question. Okay? Um, all right, so what we're gonna, so, so can I erase those now that I've done that? Well, that's okay, I'll keep going, I'll keep going. So this was an example, but I don't need the example. We just got our, our rules. Now let's learn um, another rule. Um, a, to the n divided by, whoops, divided by a to the m is equal to, okay, let's think about this for a second. When I multiply same bases and they have exponents, what do I do to the exponents? I add them. And what is division depending di com compared to uh, multiplication? It's the opposite, right? So what would you think I would do to the exponents? Subtract. So I have same bases, so I'm going to keep my base, and it's n, and I think of this line as a humongous minus sign. n minus m, right? That's my minus sign right there, OK? So an example would be a to the sixth over a to the third, which is equal to a to the six minus three. Wait, but Gary, um, do you put the one on the top first or the one on the bottom first? You do the top, top minus the bottom. Okay. Okay? And so that equals a to the third power. Does that make sense? Yeah. Not that hard, not that hard. You won't. As, as these get more complicated, there's going to be a different way to do these. So I'm just going to warn you right now. There's going to be an easy, a, a way that I think is easier, right? Um, but, but I haven't taught everything you need to know in order to make that easier. But this is really easy. It's just that when problems get complicated, that's not so easy. Yes, what? Lyndon broke the table. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. <laughs> I'm good. Homicide. <laughs> Okay. This is going to be a great video. So yeah, this is going to be an awesome video. We're okay. talking about teeth and people breaking tables. All right. So let's try a few. Okay. Let's try a few. Let's say we've got. Um, let's say we have this. Okay. These are exa examples, right? So example one. So we got x to the sixteenth over x to the 14th. What would that be? Equal. X to the 16 minus 14, 
Which is x to the 2. Right, exactly. What about this? Wait, no, I'm writing that down. Don't go there. Um, as fast as I can. <laughs> all right. I'm going to make it a little harder now. Wrapping up x? Well, no, wait. I'll, I'll make it. Oh, yeah. Okay, I know what I do. So let's say I do this. X to the 10. Y. Y to the 4th over x to the 6th y squared. So now I'm just, it's just twice. You're just doing them twice. You've got two different variables. You just do them, you pretend the y's don't exist and you do the x's, right? So what would you get, um, Cassie? Um, x to the 10 minus 6 is 4, right? And then y to the what? 4 minus 2 is 2. That's correct. Yep. Beautiful. All right, so we'll make it even harder since you guys have this down. All right, what if I say x um, to the 8th, y to the 5th, z to the 3rd, um, third, third. all over um, pi. 2. z to the second uh, x to the fourth y to the fourth. <coughs> okay, Gideon. Oh, would you maybe subtract uh, the like terms? Yeah, so which one? So I've got to, uh, see they're not in the same order, are they? No. But Doggone but those people. It, but right? it still has the same, like, you, it still has the same rule. You have to divide by like terms, otherwise it wouldn't make sense. Bullseye. Because then you'd have, like, x to the 8th minus z to the 2nd is right, your answer. Right, and that wouldn't right. be right. That doesn't work. So, yeah, so we've got to do these, x's, okay? So what I have, Gideon? Uh, you, for the x's, you'd have x to the 4th. Right. And then my y's? Uh, you'd have y to the, yeah, you just have y. Okay, and my and z's? Y, uh, z. You got it. X Beautiful. to the fourth y z. All right? Oh, Gary. Fist to five so far. I just want to know. Everybody's with us? Gary. Okay. Well, what would happen if you had, like, two x? Yeah. One y. That's the last three one. Y. Okay. Here we go. Why did Four. I ask that? Here's our last example. So what if I gave you... Um, 16 x to the ninth power y to the sixth power over 48 x y to the fourth. What would I do for that? Yes. Uh, would the 16 and 48 uh, be added together for kids? Well, isn't that a fraction? What's would you do? You take your oh, oh, yeah. your Why numerator and denominator it? and just add them together. Divide it. Right. You could divide it. And you could have a decimal. Right. You could do that. But fractions are okay. Fractions are okay. Right. Yeah. Say what? Fractions are awesome because you don't have to do anything hard. That's true. What goes into both of these? Uh, Sixteen. Right. 16 goes into 16 once, 16 goes into 48 three times, so now we just have one third, right? So since we're getting rid of, when we use this rule, see this rule? We get rid of our fraction, don't we? See this? Do you guys see that? There's no fraction here. So, but there is a fraction with the numbers. The numbers is one third. So I'm going to just write one third right here. You guys with me on that? Does that make sense? And then I'm going to say x right here, and then what would I say, um, uh, London? So we got x. We have x to the ninth over x to the one. Right, and then y to the second. You guys understand that one third, right? Because the x and y are no longer in the fraction. If I had to put them in the fraction, where would they go? The x and y, numerator or denominator? Guys in the back. If I so Tia, if I wanted to put these in the fraction, where would they have to go? In the numerator or the denominator? Limit just Tia. If 
Think about it for a second. Numerator? Yes, exactly. Because this is x to the eighth over 1, y squared over 1. So you would just be multiplying x to the eighth y to the squared times the 1, right? Exactly. Good. Um, all right. Beautiful. All right. How are we doing? Great. We're doing great. All right. Those are all our rules. Look at how many rules you guys know. All right. Now, now I'm going to show you. Okay. I'm going to show you something. All right. So this is number five. And this is actually going to take us to another one soon. But look at this. What if I have this? x to the third over x to the ninth. Ooh, I know. Okay, so, London, what would that be? It would be one, one, over, 1 over x to the sixth power. Okay, yes, you're right. Now, using this rule, though, what would it be? Oh, it would be... Um, the same basis, it would be yeah, x, x to the, the 3 minus 9, which is x to the negative 6. You guys with me? Wait, why would it be uh, negative 6? It's 3 minus 9. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's 3 minus 9. Oh, nine, 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 yeah, it's nine, a good three. one. I got to use that on my what? class next time. Oh, this is a lecture. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I, I actually forgot. <laughs> okay. There is another fraction. The only thing is, that I keep telling you guys, we can't write this. There is a rule in algebra that says when um, for your final answer, right? It's only for your final answer. You're not supposed to leave a negative exponent in the final answer. Okay? So let's let's first of all look at the rule, and then I'll show you why it's true. Okay? First of all, the rule says this. Uh, a to the negative n power is equal to 1 over a to the positive n power. And then there's actually a sister rule that says this, 1 over a to the negative n power is equal to a to the n power. Be a That's kind of weird, right? Shouldn't it be negative one but, over? But let me just show you to make to, to simplify this. Let me just show you something. Whenever, in fact, I'm gonna even write this out because whenever you move um, uh, a, a number with a an exponent, right? A number. with an exponent. That's my shortcut for with. Um, a number with another would be quicker to write with. Now I forgot what I was doing. Whenever you move a number with another uh, with oh yeah with an exponent. Is this on the camera? With an exponent. Uh, whenever you move a number with an exponent across, this is important, across a fraction line. The, ex the sign of the exponent changes. The sign of the exponent changes. This is a absolutely awesome rule, right? If you get this, it will make all the complicated things so simple, right? Um, the sign of the x, oh, no, I forgot what I said. <laughs> the sign of the exponent changes, okay? So let's see what that means. If I have, if I have x to the negative four over five, What's, what's in front of my x to the negative 4? A 1. There's a hidden 1. There's always a hidden 1 there. So I'm just going to remember. I'm going to put that there for now, just so I realize this. Now, if I wanted to, if let's say I did all this computation, that was my answer, right? 
But math in algebra, it says you can't leave it with a negative exponent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to circle the negative exponent and what it affects. Does it affect the 1? No. Why? Because it's not That's next to it. It only affects what it's next to. And if there was a parenthesis and the 1 was included, it would affect the parenthesis. Right? But then there would be a 1 in front of the parenthesis too. Right? There's always a 1 in front of everything. Right? So there'd still be a 1 upstairs. Right? But right now, that's not being affected by the negative force. Now look, just by bringing that downstairs, this is what I would have. I'd have 1 upstairs still, and I'd have 5x to the positive 4. Just by moving it, just by moving it across this fraction line, I just solved my problem, my dilemma. Does that make sense? Yeah. So up here, if you think about it, but you say, oh my god, there's no fraction line. Oh no. Well, make one, right? Right? It's not very hard to make one. Right? You just put anything over one. If it's not a fraction, just put it over one. Right? It's, that may, it's uh, one. Is a, represents a whole value. So this a, is going to go downstairs. Now, does that mean the answer is x to the 6? No. No, because there's a 1 up here, right? So it's 1 over x to the 6. Okay, does that make sense? Just the 5, do you get that? Does that make sense? So an example of where you'd use this, where this is really helpful, is like this. Let's say I had x to the negative 9 over y to the negative 3, how should I write that? I could, I could move this one up, couldn't I? doesn't matter which way across the fraction line. If I move the y to the negative 3 upstairs, it becomes y to the positive 3. And then if I move this downstairs, it becomes x to the positive 9. There's my answer. See how easy that is? It is so easy once you get that. So you can right? just go, so you can just pretty much with this go, that's not right. I'm just going to manipulate the numbers because I'm like a freaking math right. magician. Right. Like, you're, you can do that? Yes. But you can't do that in real life. Yes, you can. You can. Don't, don't well, show me, Gary. Don't but, show me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, we won't go in there. Go there, go there. But um, all right. So now, can I erase that for a second? Because I want to show you. Because I'm running out of board space. I've got to erase something. I want to show you what this really means in long in long form. Okay, and you'll see why mathematicians like you to write it like this in the final in, at the at the, as your final answer. So let's do this the long way. How would I do that the long way? What's x cubed? x times x times x, right? Over, what's x to the ninth? x times 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 x. Did I do that right? Yes. OK, you guys agree with me? That's the same thing, right? That is the same thing as this, x cubed over x to the ninth. You agree with that, Gideon? Does that make sense? Why do you say me? Well, I just, I just, I, <laughs> I saw you looking down. I just wanted to be sure you saw it. You understood it. But yes, um, it does. Yeah. All right. All right. So now let's look at this. What could I do to simplify this? What is x over x? Look. What is that? One. That's just one. So I could just cross those out. Well, what is this x over x? Oh, well, I can cross that out. Well, wait, but what's this x over x? One, yeah, it can, continues being one, right? But now, oh, oh, wait, oh, 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 oh. There's nothing upstairs at all, right? There's nothing upstairs, no value. What? There's value of one. What is upstairs? A one, there's a hidden one right here, right? So I've got a one there. So look, I have one over x to the what? One, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, look. Look at that. Right? So when you have when you get an answer that says x to the negative six, this is what it means. It means you have a lot of x's in the denominator. It doesn't mean that the value is negative. 
It just means your x's are in the denominator, which means you're going to have a very, very small number, right? Does that make sense? A, a negative exponent does not mean a negative value. It means a very small number, okay? We're talking atoms, the size of atoms, or, you know, the big toe of a big atom, or even a little atom, a little toe of a little atom, right? That's the size that we'd be talking about. Mary, how can you have numbers that small if your handwriting is so big? Like well, <laughs> they, only you would come up with question, a question like that. I'm just curious. It's a great question. I don't because because the numbers are merely representations of the real thing. Exactly. So you can't physically have a number be that small. Okay. Unless everything is made Moving of right binary. Along. <laughs> Unless of course everything is made of binary, as people okay. expect. Some people. All right, so now what we're going to do, I just want to be sure I'm not going to throw any wind, you know, hard things at you. All right, so knowing what you know, what if I gave you this? Um, 10 x uh, simplify this. First of all, so first of all, let's just forget about all this stuff. So let's look at 10 25ths. Can we simplify 10 25ths? Yeah. All right. 10 goes into 25 2.5 times, right? Yeah, that's not what we're, we're going to try to keep it whole numbers, right? So I'm in trouble. The principal just walked in, guys. Be perfect. Hi, Deepa. Okay, so what? So what do I do? So, so what goes into both? Uh, five. five. Five goes into 10, how many times? Two. Two. Five goes into 25, how many times? Five. Okay, great. So immediately I put an equals and I put a line. Do you see that? I just put a line and I know it's gonna be two over five. Right? Hey, you're gonna have to watch the video because we have covered a lot of stuff today. Yeah. Are you healthy and well? Yes. Yes. All right. So, um, all right, so now, I know, let's see, let's, now we just take one thing at a time. Do I have like terms anymore? No. Very noisy. Do I have like terms? No. I have an X, a Y, a Z, and an A, B, and a C. No, no like terms. So, all I, but do I have anything with negative exponents? Yes. And how do I make them positive? Yeah. Move them across the fraction line, right? So this x squared, negative 2, becomes x squared, positive 2. This y to the negative 6 becomes y to the positive 6, right? So z to the 4, should I bring that down and make it z to the negative 4? No. No, I want it to be, I want it to be positive. Well, leave it there. seriously do that. z to the 4. And then the a and the b, should I move them up and make them negative? No. No. I'll just keep them down here. a, b, and then the c. Go up. Should I, should I do this, 1 over C? No. no. No, 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 I should just do the C, move it up. Right, good. So pretty easy, right? Pretty easy. Yeah. Right, fist to five. Come on, Ben, five. Yeah. Give me a five. <laughs> a big zero. zero. All right, yeah, okay, good. Right, yeah, this, like you, you definitely I need to watch this video. I don't yeah. even have um, a pencil to write down. <laughs> okay. All right, and then I think, okay, now let me just show you. That's okay. So that's one. Now, remember I told you that with this one, there's going to eventually be a way that's easier with complicated problems. So we're going to do a couple. So what if I gave you eight? Let me think. X to the negative two. Y to the. Let me think. Negative five z squared all over whoops all over say twelve x to the um, negative four y to the negative nine z to the one. Now that looks scary. 
Doesn't it? Not yes. really. Yes, it does. It's scary. It's scary. You guys are going to have terrible dreams tonight. Right? All right. Eight and twelve. I always do that first because why? Because I'll forget if I don't do it now. Four. Four goes. Thank you. So much. Thank you. I needed somebody to tell me. Four times four is eight, right? Four goes into eight twice, right? Four goes into twelve three times. So immediately I put a long fraction line and I put a two and a three. You with me? Now, we are going to use this principle, this thing that I wrote over here in long, long words, right? That by moving things up and down, I can simplify things really easily. I can change the sign of the exponent, right? So this is the rule. Find the, the do I have like terms? I have x's, right? So I'm going to just deal with my x's. I want to find the x with the smallest exponent, right? The x with the smallest exponent. Which one has the smallest exponent? The I have an x to the negative 2, and I have x to the negative 4. Negative Which is smaller? Negative 4. Negative 4 is smaller, right? you got to make sure you're careful on that, because now, if I bring that up, if I wipe it out here, and I bring it up here, it's now x to the positive 4, right? Did it make that so it's obvious? All right, and then what about this? Which is smaller? Wait. Negative five or negative nine? Negative nine. Negative nine. So I'm going to knock this off. I'm going to bring it upstairs. It's y to the ninth power. You see what I'm doing? Okay. And then, which one's smaller? This one, right? Yeah. So I'm going to bring it, knock it off here. I'm going to bring it out here to the negative one. Now, all I have to do is use this method, this first thing that I taught. I have same bases times ex with exponents, so I add the exponents. So suddenly I've got my 2 and my 3, and then I have x to the negative 2 plus 4, which is x to the, what's 4 minus 2? Two? 2. 2. 2. And then I have y to the 9 minus 5. y to the 4, right? And then I have z to the 2 minus 1, just z, and I'm done. Look how easy that was, right? It would have been harder to use this rule. It would have been significantly harder. It would have been two more steps, right? And so, do you see what I did? I just took the, when I, as long as I had x's on both top and, as long as I had x's both upstairs and downstairs, I took the one with the smaller exponent and I moved it up so that they're both on the same playing field. Does that make sense? And then I just added the exponents. But when I move it up, the sign of the exponent changes. You'll, you'll, you'll see that in the video when you watch it, okay? Um, fist to five, do you guys understand that? So there's gonna be a bunch of problems like that you, that are com complicated like this, and you just have to, that's the trick. Now, in this one, there were no like terms. So all you had to do was move the negative ones downstairs and the negative ones up, I mean the, neg the ones that were negative downstairs upstairs. And um, I am being notified that it is class was over one minute ago. So I'm going to end this lecture. Subscribe.